Um, our next speaker is Margaret Burnham, who is a professor of law and a founder of the Northeastern School of Law, Civil Rights and Restorative Justice Project. She's also a co-founder of South Africa Partners. I'm happy to claim her. For the past 25 years, I've had the pleasure and honor of working with Margaret on South Africa-related campaigns and activities. Throughout, I have admired her commitment, clear thinking, principled leadership. She has been my teacher, uh, mentor, and friend. And Margaret is one of, as it was uh, spoken by Dean Paul earlier, she's one of the only people I have ever met who can boast that Nelson Mandela personally called her up and asked for help. Um, that call led to Mr. Mandela appointing her to an international human rights commission to investigate alleged human rights abuses inside the African National Congress, inside his own party. And it was that commission that was the precursor to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that Archbishop Tutu presided over. Please join me in welcoming Margaret Burnham. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you, Governor Patrick, for joining the Northeastern community and for joining the South Africa Partners family at this remarkable gathering. Mary, thank you so much for bringing us together, and Dean Poiga and Dean Paul for your cogent remarks and for hosting us. As Representative Rushing has said, we here in Boston have a special relationship with Madiba because, as Representative says, he came to us, to the 250,000 of us who were awaiting him at the hat shell in June of 1990, to the thousands of us who were lined up on Martin Luther King Boulevard here in the city looking for him and his wife, and to the hundreds of us who packed into the rafters at Madison Park High School, and to a few lucky ones of us who, like Representative Rushing, and I admit that I was one of them, and Mary was too, who joined Senator Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy and Stevie Wonder for lunch, <laughs> overlooking the Atlantic Ocean at the library at Columbia Point. He was here among us in June 1990, which was just a few months after he took that glorious walk from prison in February 1990. And we here in our Commonwealth and in our city, we received him well. It is that special relationship nurtured with such dedication and such wisdom by South Africa partners from that very Every day that he came to visit us, and alas, it was his only visit to Boston until his passing last month. It is that relationship that makes this event here in our dear city so precious. For today, friends, we are gathered because to together we have set for ourselves a task as a city as individual citizens of the world. And that task, as those who have graced this podium before me have said, is one of commitment and of recommitment, individually and collectively. The command to recommit, that is what he left us with. And that is how we do honor to his gift to us, to his, the gift of his presence here in our city 24 years ago. Now when Madiba visited Madison Park, it was to deliver to the young people a message who were gathered there, a message that the future belonged to them, that it was theirs to make. 
He often remarked himself, and now I speak to those in the audience who are under 25. Mandela himself said how unlikely it was that he himself would dedicate his life to struggle, to the struggle for human dignity and for equality and against economic and political repression. In his autobiography, The Long Walk to Freedom, Madiba wrote, I was not born with the hunger to be free. I was born free, free in every way I could know, free to run in the fields near my mother's hut, free to swim in the clear stream that ran through my village, free to roam to roast mealies under the stars and ride the broad backs of slow moving bulls. As long as I obeyed my father and abided by the customs of our tribe, I was not troubled by the law of man or God. Even as Mandiba became a young lawyer, his vision of his own future was not complicated. He would return to the Tembu people where he would be a well-trained advisor to the future Tembu king. But then Mandela went out into the world to Johannesburg to practice law, and he met up with ANC activist Walter Sisulu and Oliver Tambo, with whom he made politics and practiced law. And then his gaze widened beyond his own people, far beyond his college town. And as he described it, at that point, the struggle became his life. And for those of you who are our students at this institution, you are here to widen your gaze. It was his exposure to the destitute conditions of his new community in Alexandra Township, to the gratuitous disgraces of apartheid, and to the injustices in the courts where he worked and practiced. That was what transformed that Transkai youth into a revolutionary. It was here that he found his courage, his voice, his gift for leadership, and it was there that his commitment to the freedom struggle would become all-consuming and would indeed for him become a life and death matter. All of us, those of us who are into our senior years and those of you who are still young. We are in a sense all free. We are as free as young Mandela was in the village of his youth. But as he came to realize, so too must we. None of us is free so long as so many of us are quite literally not. So long as so many of us are without adequate education, without adequate health care, without homes, without personal safety, without food, without a reliable, full, and inclusive democracy, then we are not free. We can all, as Mary Teseo and Tamba Makubeza said, honor the Mandela within us. We can honor that as a city, as a university, as a commonwealth, and we can honor that as individuals when we commit ourselves to a cause that stands somewhere on the road, the long road to freedom that he walked. And that is the road to enlarge the lives of the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the disempowered, the disrespected, the lives lived in the back rows of the alley Alexandra Township, lives lived in prison cells in our commonwealth and across our country. Yes, lives diminished in our own schools and in our neighborhoods and in our homeless shelters. Let us all do that. On Mandela Day, which will soon come, and indeed on every day, let us honor the Mandela within us. Thank you. Thank you.